and welcome back to AC Today Reports 2023. This is our first episode of the year and we're so excited because a lot of wonderful things have been happening conference wide and we just can't wait to tell you about it. So we appreciate you joining us this Thursday evening or whenever you are watching this episode because your conference is doing a lot of wonderful things and we're here to share uh, a lot about that with you. All right, so we're actually gonna jump right into our first exciting piece of news. And this is our Haitian Youth Federation. They got off the ground running this year. On January the 21st, they hosted their opening ceremony worship service. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what an opening ceremony service is, this is where all the youth from our 20 Haitian churches come together for worship and fellowship, and they spend some time setting the tone for what they want ministry to look like throughout the year and reviewing their calendar. So they were able to do that, as I said before, January the 21st. They actually held it um, in Pennsylvania at one of the high schools there, the Art Academy at Benjamin Rush High School, and over 500 500 of our young people and supporters came out and had a wonderful time. During the service, there was a play to start things off. They also had wonderful praise and worship. And our very own youth director, Pastor Patrick Graham, was their guest speaker. And during the evening, they took time to have a panel discussion where the young people could share some of their concerns um, with their leaders. So we were so happy to hear that our Youth Federation was back going after three years. This was after three years of not meeting in person, they were able to come together and what a time they had. So we're looking forward to all of the exciting things that they plan to do this year. As a matter of fact, they were able to elect new officers, um, which they introduced to everyone um, during that day as well. So congratulations to our Haitian Youth Federation. Continue doing the great things you're doing in ministry. The next thing they're looking forward to is their retreat coming up in the spring. And in other news, we are extremely excited about Pine Forge Academy's recent NAACP nomination. Many of you may have heard that their film, This Is My Black, was recently nominated in the category of Outstanding Breakthrough Creative for Motion Picture. So we're so excited for the Academy. We're so excited for Jared Roseboro and everyone that was associated with this film. It's doing so well in film festivals and now we have this nomination. Many of you have voted and we thank you for supporting our school, but thank you all for the support and the outpouring of love that has gone to the Academy um, for this nomination. We appreciate you so much. And speaking of the Academy, uh, there are so many of you out there who love and give back to the Academy and we have someone that we brought into our studio to d discuss this and we'll check out that interview right after the break. Evangelism, the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. In Allegheny's conference, we believe the greatest witness is in our service. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. We are the hands. We are the feet. We are the heart of Jesus. The sermons we preach don't always take place in a pulpit. Sometimes it's in our care for our fellow man. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We are the hands. We are the feet. We are the heart of Jesus. We will work with each other. We will work side by side and will guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We are the hands. We are the feet. We are the heart of Jesus. And when we love one another as he loves us, they know that we are his disciples and they will want to follow him too. Praise the Lord. 
We are the hands. We are the feet. We are the heart of Jesus. As we mentioned before the break, uh, we had a wonderful opportunity to invite a special guest into our studios for an interview. This is someone who has what I like to consider a unique love for the Academy, and we thought it was only appropriate to talk about why she loves the Academy so much and what she's doing to give back to the students there. So let's check out that interview now. Right now we are very fortunate to have a very special guest with us. Her name is Lynn Davis, and we're just going to take some time to chat about some exciting things that she is a part of. But let's start off, um, Lynn, with just sharing what is your affiliation with AEC? What's your connection to this conference? I have been a member of the Allegheny East Conference and in this area all of my life. Wow. Except... <laughs> <laughs> 20 some years in Georgia. Okay. But uh, this has always been home. So I grew up here as a little person, five years old, uh, and then Pine Forge Academy okay. for four years. Okay, awesome. Well, three awesome. years. Three years Mistaken, awesome. that's right. Three years. Okay, awesome, awesome. And your home church was Camden, in Camden, Mount Olivet? That's Mount right, Olivet? that's right. Okay. Mount Olivet. Awesome, awesome. All right, now you mentioned that you attended Pine Forge Academy, and mm -hmm. uh, anyone who knows you knows that you have a heart for the Academy, um, which is you know, one of the hallmarks of our conference, one of the historical um, aspects of this conference. So tell us why um, Pine Forge Academy kind of holds a special place in your heart. I'll tell you what holds a really special place in my heart. Okay. It's actually kids. Ah. I love high schoolers. Okay. I've done 20, 30, almost 30 years in education, classrooms, etc. But Pine Forge, of course, is close because I attended. Okay. I'm an alum. I want kids to have exposure to, I want them to experience life kind of like I did. Mm -hmm. I have a scripture that I'm going to share later that says life is meat and raiment. Mm -hmm. And so for students here who are boarding students, their lives, I think, are technology, food, <laughs> clothing. And so whatever we as alum can do to enhance that, that's kind of what I want to do. I will add, I met a student, my sisters and I were here, it was years ago, maybe about 2017. Okay. And the student said, you know what, we would like to see the alumni more. Mm. And we'd also like for them maybe just to send care packages or whatever. And that arrested my attention. Okay. So the short version is uh, the Alumni Association, under the leadership at that time of Leon Thomas, mm -hmm. said, let's do it. So we ordered pizzas for the entire school, gave each student a letter just to say, your alumni mm -hmm. is here for you. So that's kind of the short version of why Pine Forge is in my heart. I okay. love the kids. Right. I love the potential of the school. Awesome. Awesome. Now, you took this conversation with the student a little bit further, though, than just that pizza and the, that note. You actually formed, um, we consider an organization or a group yes. um, that would be more intentional about doing that throughout the year. Tell us a little bit about the name of that and um, all that's involved. The name of it. All of us, five of us, let me name those, Dr. Thomas, Karen Haskins, I wish I knew their class years, um, Miriam Battles, Lafayette Trabick, and myself. We all were trying to figure out what's a good name, so we came up with the name Alumni Association Student Engagement Team, which essentially is an asset, prayerfully, we're all assets, blessings. 
But um, your question was taking it further. We've had speakers, we've given gloves and socks, uh, just anything to make the students' lives uh, a little bit better. Did I answer your you question? You did, but I know about the self-care day because I felt like, <laughs> well, first of all, we all need a self-care day. I think yes, we can all agree. Yes, but yes. knowing that the students are here on campus for the majority of the time, and sometimes it's just about schoolwork, and they're just going, going, going. Um, tell us about some of the self-care days that you all have sponsored for the, for the students. Now, in all honesty, the Pine Forge Academy counselor organized the self-care day. Actually, two years. This year, or 2022, I just thought the kids would like animals because previously they had enjoyed therapy dogs. But this year we thought we'd take it to another level. Really, God was good. We were able to find alpaca that owners, partners, uh, that brought the alpaca to the campus. Um, yeah, so anything that the classroom cannot bring to the student asset wants to be able to try to bring to students. Um, that's the short version. Right, that's awesome. Then what has the reaction been from the students um, with the different things you all have been able to do over the last few years? Typically, the reaction has really been good. Uh, I think I think just the attention, uh, mm -hmm. seeing students, to me, want to be seen. All of us want to be seen. And so I think students have felt like they see us here. Mm -hmm. It's been difficult during the pandemic. So um, I think just any type of outside engagement has been a blessing. I don't hear a lot of comments. I forgot to bring in a book. At one point, the alumni received 60 letters of thanks from students to ASSET. So that was totally inspiring. Totally inspiring. So that's the most that we've heard in print from students. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure um, they appreciate all that you all do. Now for someone who's inspired by hearing that this is even out there, maybe it's Pine Forge Academy alum, or even those who just have a heart for the school, how can they get involved with what you all are doing? They can contact growforward247 at Gmail. They can just type in, um, I'm interested. And that we do not have a separate website, but they could also contact the National Pine Forge Academy Alumni Association if they're interested in participating in more. Um, we're always looking for photographers, for writers, for people that just have simple talents, uh, cooking, um, auto mechanics, uh, radio, TV. As a matter of fact, uh, later this month in February, I have something that I brought here. We're gonna have uh, on our self-care day, one of the students in a um, vision board course that I did said he was very interested in software engineering. And so we have a current issue of Journey here. This gentleman owns an IT company and he has agreed to speak with the student and students about uh, information technology. So that will be the end of February. So if people have just basic, what they think are neutral everyday skills, they are welcome. That's awesome. And that's such great exposure for all of the students, helping them kind of get, um, you know, exposure to fields they're interested in, but don't necessarily have the resources to, to meet these people. So those connections are gonna be crucial to um, the student's livelihood going forward. So this is really awesome stuff. So 
Anything else um, you'd like to share with us, Lynn? Like, what inspires you to do all this stuff? Where do you get this passion and joy to do these kinds of things? Because you're always coming up with ideas of ways to give back. Well, you know, um, I brought just a little reading here, and I did want to share this too. It says, it's totally true, God adores you. Um, God does adore us. Um, a few of the things that I have read in this book, The Faith I Live By. This particular day is saying, what is your life? The life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. I think teenagers love, as I said, clothing, technology, anything that nourishes their soul. What inspires me is the talents that God has given. My talents are simple. I love to help. I have a bachelor's in social work that's helping. But here it's saying that our life is our talent, which God has committed to our care. And so that's inspiring for me to want to give my gifts simple gifts, because that's supposedly the breath, the life that God has placed in all of us. Mm, that's deep. In one or two final, actually, I'm not going to read these final things. I'm going to share a quote. At the bottom of this, it says, what is your life? Um, Mark Twain, that I never read, <laughs> <laughs> an author, writer, said that life has two important days. One of those days is the day we're born. The day that Latasha was born was an exciting day. <laughs> but the day that Latasha discovered why she was born is amazing. I don't know that much about you, your background, but I know that this is a gift, your Allegheny East communications involvement is a gift. The gentlemen, the camera folks. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like we can use the basic gifts that God has given us and he'll grow them. That five, two, and one talent story, mm -hmm. if you have five, you're gonna have 10. If you have two, you're gonna have four. If you have one and you hide it, it's not going to it's it's not going to blossom right. and grow. Right. And so that's kind of what keeps me going, just knowing that my gifts God can use, and particularly at this time at Pine Forge Academy with Allegheny East. Awesome! I love that. So inspirational. The day we were born, and the day we discover um, why. why. Mm, that, that's pretty deep. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Now, I know that you make connections with people all over the place, and you're always trying to find a way that they can somehow give back um, to Pine Forge Academy. And I understand that there was um, a gentleman that who wasn't able to come to the campus, but shared um, a video with the students. Can you give us a little background on that? Because we're going to share that as we close um, out this segment. This young man I met uh, at actually at Georgetown University in Washington, and he seemed to just have a heart for sharing. He's an old young man, but I asked if he would like to share, inspire students at Pine Forge. And so he agreed and did, oh, I'll call them episodes, but they were very short, uh, powerful encouragement, um, whatever's, words for students. His name is, at this point, Dr. Tyrell Powell. So I, I am so grateful that he and many, many others, I won't even start to mention we've had Asset, has had a lot of support for engaging with students. So I'm hoping the listeners will be inspired. Okay, well, thank you, first of all, for um, understanding what your gift is and being willing to use it to bless others, particularly the students at Pine Forge Academy and, frankly, 
everyone you come in contact with. So we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to hear that video as we close out the segment. But thank you so much uh, for taking the time to chat with us. We appreciate and it. I thank you for having us. Hello, Pond Forge. Good to see you for another week. Now, something I want to share with you today is a little different than usual, being that most cases we talk about how we can continue to push ourselves forward and continue to keep going towards our goals. However, this week, I want to just talk about taking a step back and also knowing when to rest. So to not contradict previous messages, really, it's all about finding a balance and understanding what your thresholds are and listening to your body because rejuvenation is also vital in us pursuing our goals. You know, have a blessed week and get some rest. Hello and welcome to visitaec.org, the official website of Allegheny East Conference of Seventh Day Adventists. We like to take some time to highlight some of the important features on this website that we think you would enjoy. Let's start here on our homepage. Up top, you'll find all of our latest news. Right below that, all of our official programming that we have ongoing will be right there. And beneath that, you'll find the quick links to our ministries, churches, education, and About Us pages. All right, so let's take a look at our navigation bar. First, we have our About Us page. On this page, you can find out all about Allegheny East Conference's history, but not just the conference's history, but the histories of all of our churches. And don't forget to check out our employee directory that you can find on that page as well. And you'll also find a list of all of our presidents, current and former. Next, you'll find our news page. On this page, you'll find out all of the latest things happening within our conference. And don't forget to check out our calendar while you're there. And next up is our administration page. On this page, you'll find our three executive officers, as well as links to their individual pages. And don't forget to check out their job descriptions while you're there. Next, you have our human resources page. On this page, you can find tools for our new hires, our current employees, and those who are planning to retire. You can also find a link to our employee directory, as well as our online application. Next up is our ministries page. This is one of our most popular pages on the site because you can find all of our departmental directors, as well as links to their departmental pages. Next up is our media page. On this page, you can find links to our YouTube and Vimeo channels. Make sure you subscribe while you're there. You'll also find out the services that our media department has to offer. All right, next up we have our CBL store. You may say, what's CBL? Just think like an ABC store. This is where you can purchase your vegetarian goods and religious literature. And next we have our prayer tab, and we consider this one of the most important links on our whole website. This is where you can go for inspiration and even submit your own prayer request. We have designated individuals there to take care of each specific request that comes into our website. And last but not least is our give button. This is where you have the opportunity to support the conference's goals and initiatives. Thank you for joining us on a tour of our site, visitaec.org. We hope you enjoyed all of the information and resources available there. But most importantly, we hope that you'll come back and come back often. All right, and we're back. Thank you for tuning in to AEC Today Reports. As you guys know, it is Black History Month, and uh, we love to do anything we can to celebrate such a cherished month for all of us. And our Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department decided this was the perfect opportunity to discuss the Social Justice and Emancipation Bible Study Guide. How many of you knew that one existed? If you didn't, you can always get your copy at Advent Source. But for the whole month of February, every Saturday from 4 to 5, um, Dr. Calvin Rock has been facilitating a riveting discussion on this study guide. and. We've had special guests like all the writers and the editors from the Bible Study Guide coming on and sharing some very insightful things. If you missed it, it's okay. Uh, we do have um, those episodes archived on our YouTube page as well as our Facebook page. So wherever you're watching this, you can go back and watch those um, older episodes. However, you still have an opportunity to engage in a live discussion coming up this Saturday at 4 o'clock. So make sure you tune in. But in addition, because the series has been going so well and uh, you all are so interested in the topic, uh, the guests have decided to come back on March the 4th to have another live Q&A so that you can ask any questions that you may have from the entire series that has been presented all month long. So make sure you check that out on March the 4th. Um, if you still want to get that study guide, don't forget you can get that at Advent Source. All right. Well, um, in addition to 
um, studying the guide this week, social justice is a theme that uh, our conference feels important all year round, but one of our areas, the Virginia area, recently hosted a rally, a social justice rally. This is something that Attorney Doggett is trying to do in all of our areas, so one will be coming to an area near you. But um, February the 11th, he had the opportunity to go to our Calvary Church in Newport News, Virginia, a full day of activities. And I say a full day, I mean a full day. And we will actually cover that in another um, episode of AC Today. But here's just a snippet of what took place that weekend. We have got to teach self-love yes. because people don't value what we often offer because it's from us. Wow. We wow. got a value. That's one. Two, we have to have a mindset that we're not going to just participate in a problem. We're going to solve a problem. Yes. Uh, some things you're going to have to keep. For instance, food banks are never going out of style because they're like the uh, urgent care in the healthcare system. People are going to have accidents, things are going to happen, you've got to have urgent care. But you don't exist as urgent care uh, to continue to serve somebody who you're trying to get healthy. So you're solving a chronic problem. We've got to value what we have and have the mindset we're going to solve this as opposed to just participate with it. And also, this past Sabbath, Many of you may be aware that the North American Division declared it Mental Wellness Sabbath. And so many of our churches found ways to highlight mental health, mental wellness. One of those churches was our Rehoboth Church in Reading, Pennsylvania. As a matter of fact, they dedicated the whole month of February to health, and healthy and happy. That was their theme for the whole month of February. And we had the opportunity to visit them this past Sabbath to see how they were taking this theme and really pouring into their church as it relates to mental health. And we had an opportunity to sit down with two of the presenters um, during this special day. And so let's check out a little bit of what they had to say. You think about it, you're always meeting people you're always feeling and experiencing things. And so sometimes it helps to know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So we came, we talked about some Bible characters who had what we would call today mental health mm -hmm. and just kind of breaking the stigma around mental illness that it's not this thing where you just pray people out of, but it's this thing that there are people on earth to help cope, manage, and deal with that. We have all these biblical figures that we went through who have felt depression, who have thought about suicide, you know, who have been stressed. And those are all feelings that we feel just going through everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of the things where, you know, you have people who are ready mm -hmm. to have those discussions. And then for some people, it's still a challenge. We will note that we will have a full episode of our experience there at Rehoboth in another episode of AC Today, but we hope you got an idea of what they experienced there. Well, guys, we're wrapping up. I just have a few quick reminders for you. One, have you been checking out our website, visitac.org? If not, please take some time to go through there and look at some of the information and resources available. Also, we know you may be watching us on Facebook and YouTube, but have you subscribed? Do you follow our page? Make sure you do that as well. We really, really appreciate it. And we hope that you're tuning into our Upset podcast, which airs every Sunday at 6 p.m. right here on YouTube and our Facebook page. We hope that you're tuning in. We love it when you come on and interact with us. So please check that out this coming Sunday. And we have a lot of great things happening uh, within Allegheny East, and we can't wait to share them with you. But if you are listening to this right now and you say, hey, our church is doing some exciting things, we need AC Today to come out and cover that please let us know. You can write me at lhewitt at aecsda.com and we'd love to come out to your church and highlight what you're doing. But for now, thank you for tuning in. Please have a wonderful weekend and a blessed Sabbath. We will see you next month.